our next talk is by Francesco Andrades, but uh, we uh, selected it as a, a special prize because we thought it's pretty cool and the paper was written very nicely. So uh, thanks a lot for your contribution. I'm looking forward to your explanation. Thanks. Thank you. Um, well, so hello everyone. Um, I'm Francisco Andrades. I'm an undergraduate student of informatics from Federico Santa Maria Technical University in Chile. And I'm going to present my contribution to the science forecast session, named a method to break semantic relations on artificial intelligence papers. Um, this is actually my first talk ever, so <laughs> please have me some, some patience. Um, regarding Ankulev, the second author is actually my professor. He guided me throughout the process, so uh, all the knowledge meant to him. So about, about the challenge, the main objective was to predict emerging research topics in the artificial intelligence field. To do this, the host of the competition proposed a network where each vertex represents a semantic concept relevant to the field, and each edge represents the co-occurrence of two concepts in the same paper. Our task is to predict uh, which edge are going to be formed on a field of the graph. Uh, the data set of the competition corresponds uh, to a semantic network until the year 2017, and we have to predict for year 2020, an older, an older snapshot of the, network, of the network is given as a standardized test set by the host, uh, where we have information only by uh, 2014, and we have to predict for 2017. So this is a, the test set where we uh, present our, our results. I'm going to comment on the background, necessary for the middle. Uh, so for the problem of link prediction, real quick, uh, for a given graph in a particular time, time state, Link prediction refers to a problem of predicting which links are going to be formed on a field of state. Graph neural networks are a family of deep learning methods that can take a graph directly as an input. To achieve this, they use a, what is called um, a DCN layers. And DCN, it, it, there are several proposals on layers, but DCN is a standard. It computes uh, the following propagation that you can see here. Um, where the normalized adjacent C matrix is uh, multiplied by the, by the activations of the previous layer and uh, the network weights. So uh, like there are several proposals on layers, there are also proposals on um, architectural designs uh, that excels in a particular task. So um, for, graph, for graph classification, uh, the, the DCNN architecture was proposed. In a DGCNN, first a stack of DCN layers uh, learned the embeddings of the nodes, a novel sort pooling layer, uh, which the authors of the paper proposed, uh, standardized the, uh, these latent representations uh, to a fixed size and a consistent order. After this, uh, a stack of 1T convolutional layers uh, and a few dense, dense layers uh, finished the model. So um, the sort pooling layer, uh, what did it actually do? It takes as an input the column-wise concatenation of every DCN output, where each row represents a vertex embedding. Then it sorts this input in a consistent order and standardizes the output to a fixed size, uh, which is dependent on, on, a, on an hyperparameter k. So uh, the vertex order is uh, calculated by, by first uh, sorting the rows using uh, the last column in ascending order. And if there is a tie, that the tie is broken using the second to last column and, and so on. So the, the output of the sort layer is now a standard. It has a consistent order and a standard um, size. Uh, so it can be treated uh, with classical uh, deep learning layers. And they propose uh, that um, this layer um, to be a 1D convolutional layers and, and, a, and, and dense layers. So for the problem of link prediction, the SIL framework was proposed. Um, for each potential link, it extracts, it extracts the neighborhood of the two vertex. Then it addresses the problem as a graph classification problem. Um, if we use the one hop neighborhood, uh, we, are go we are going to refer to a one hop uh, local subgraph. Uh, so, about the proposed method, <coughs> the first stage is uh, the formulation of the training data. The training set was controlled. Uh, using a three years older snapshot of the network. So for example, for, for our test set, where we have input uh, for the uh, year 2014, uh, the input for training is corresponds to, uh, to potential links at the year uh, 2011. And the target to be predicted are the, their existence on the year 2014. So there is sort, sort of a cheat 
in the years in the years used for training and the input for data. We, we trained the network using as an input the years in 2011 and predict with that network train and the using inputs on 2014. Uh, this uh, could, could certainly be further explored, the, this uh, problem. The potential links for training were chosen almost at random. We only, um, there were only two restrictions made. The frequency of the two classes were forced to, to be roughly the same. We used like um, 10,000 um, for each uh, class. And no, 10,000 in total. So like 5,000 for each class. And we, for the second restriction, we propose a categorization for the potential links. So uh, type zero links uh, refers to um, the links where both nodes have a non-zero degree. Type one refers to the links where one node and only one node has a non-zero degree. And type two are the links where both nodes have a degree of zero. So we have uh, the, the three types of, of links in our, in, in, our, in our links. So only type one, type zero and type one links uh, were considered for, for the training set as type two links uh, really don't have any kind of information. For supervised learning, we propose the SEAL framework using a DTCNN as an architecture for graph classification. For a low memory solution, only one hub subgraph uh, were used and 35% of the nodes of, of, of each subgraph um, were actually used. So for each subgraph, we drop 65% uh, of the nodes at, at random. We uh, propose a DTCNN architecture, so we fine tune the, this architecture uh, to the problem using our test set. And the training was, was with um, a binary cost entropy as a loss function and the learning rate uh, with um, the learning rate of um, 10 to the minus 5 with a batch size of uh, 1. On our results, the proposed method is compared to MLK's case baseline on three different scenarios. The first being the standardized set test set. The second one, using only type one links on the standard test set, we wanted to see a how um, our model behaves in the in this scenario. And the last one on the challenge level. So um, we can see that our method is clearly competitive with the baseline, even if we had uh, to impose severe restrictions on the information we use. We only uh, use 35% of the nodes, and I, I didn't mention it, but we ignore completely a temporal dimension. When, when we constructed our, our train, train set, our, our input, um, we, we only use the finest of the graph. Moreover, our method seems to be more robust uh, on, the on type one prediction, test dagger in the table. And this scenario is important because it represents a kind of cold start problem where when one concept has not made any connections yet, a proper prediction in these uh, kind of cases has uh, many obligations and, and is surely uh, relevant. We also, also propose an hypothesis on the fundamentals of the problem regarding the, the kind of input. So uh, we speculate that type zero and type one links not only represent different inputs, but also represent different problems. As different problems, they may have uh, different functions that solve them and the network may be able to realize this and learn in fact uh, two functions, if one for each kind of input. So the motivation comes from thinking about what represents each kind of input. The type zero problem correspond uh, to a regular link prediction where um, when we use the SIL framework, we have um, two subgraph with information with topology and have to predict a link, a link between them. We call this an, an union problem. This is re the regular link prediction problem. Type one link prediction instead uh, on, the, on the right uh, refers to a case where we have only one subgraph with topology. And the other one is an isolated node with no information uh, at all. So as there is no information on this node, it can be uh, interpreted as irrelevant to the output. Uh, so in this case, we, we are really predicting the probability that has a subgraph of, of observing a new arbitrary node in a particular position of its, of its topology. We call this a problem an absorption problem, and we speculate that these problems are, are, are uh, fundamentally different. So uh, to explore this idea, we, anal we anal analyze the activations of our network. We expected to see a differentiation on the patterns uh, compute for each um, input type. 
And the activations were extracted from the sort pooling layer as it has the fixed size and a consistent order. And this, the 100 base predicted training, training samples were used uh, for each label to, to extract the activator. So um, here we can see the patterns of five randomly chosen examples of type zero links with label one. And here we can see the patterns of five time one links with label one. We can notice that even when having the same label, uh, the network seems to make a clear uh, differentiation according to the, to the input type. The, the patterns are, are different. We present the same experiment, but for examples, we label zero. zero. Here, here we can see type zero examples. And here we can see type one. And this example looks, looks like they, they, they are all the same, but uh, they are actually no. And so uh, for a more clear visualization, we compute the um, 2D embeddings of the activations. For level one, on the left, it, uh, we, differentiate, we differentiate the color by type. So it's clear that um, it's clear that the network is making a, a differentiation for each type. There are there are uh, clusters. On the right, you can see the same embeddings, but with the color um, representing sort sort of the number of nodes uh, that had the subgraph. So it's really interesting that. Uh, the fewer nodes the subgraph has on type one links, the more closer it is to the type zero cluster for, for the network. The same beings, but for examples, we label zero. We can see again a, a grid differentiation. So um, our conclusions, more than conclusions, uh, I have several questions that I want to, want to keep exploring. So there are several, several things that we want to explore. On the method, uh, we would like to evaluate a rolling forecasting, that is uh, predicting one year first, then include the information of the predictions to predict the next uh, year and so on. We believe that there could be links with a high probability of formation that can influence other uh, predictions, that is uh, the motivation. We're, at, we're also going to explore uh, eerie uh, recurrent neural networks and graph neural networks architectures. I, I want to study uh, the subject to include the temporary information. Lastly, a question that interested me a lot personally is uh, the problem of, of how to transfer the learning from a time T1 to a time T2 when the graph in T2 is systemically denser um, and we have access to, to that information. So that, that is the problem that we train on input on 2011 and we predict on 20 on input on 2014. How we, can we transfer uh, that, that learning? On the hypothesis, the evidence suggests uh, two different functions learn. And the question that arises is what is happening with uh, the type one links that are getting closer to the type zero cluster? Um, I do not have um, evidence <laughs> to respond to that, that, that question, but. Uh, my first idea is uh, that has something to do with uh, sort of the symmetry of the input. Um, so I, I want to, to keep exploring that. Um, that wraps the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Francesco. Um, there are a number of questions in the chat. Maybe let's start with one from Michael Koch. Um, great talk, Francesco. Good question on the apology if I missed it. Could you comment? on the wall time uh, of your of your method and which hardware you used so it's a computation um, process yeah yeah sure um i didn't mention it actually and um, so like much like uh, francisco valente i had <laughs> severe restrictions on my on my hardware i when i actually run all of this in a kernel in a kaggle kernel public um so um, my method, I, I was worried to um, occupy a very few memory, very few RAM. And so uh, so um, I used the hardware that Kaggle provides. It's a, a CPU with four cores and a GPU with, with one, I understand, and like a, a 13 gigabytes of RAM. And the time uh, for training, um, it took like uh, two hours. Uh, for extracting the subgraph a little more, like three hours, but I I, on, I run that only one time. 
and, and for the training it was like uh, two hours on that on that kernel okay okay that's that's very reasonable um that's a question by Pedro Herusa um Cassias Francisco um nice presentation what was the loss function that you used in the binary equals entropy it's exactly. like Can a, yeah, I use the binary cross entropy loss for classification. Okay. Okay. The, like a common classification problem. And now I'm ah, okay, okay. No, I understand. Yes, thanks. Uh, there's one more question uh, by Michael. Um, one last question. How do you think would your model scale up for? Uh, larger graphs that are less sparse. Uh, and Michael is very interested in topics like traffic forecast and weather forecast. So uh, total different regimes where you also have probably similar graphs, but especially they're larger and uh, less sparse. So the thing I will say about the scalability on, on different um, characteristics of the input um, it's really the the method is really sensible to the uh, hyperparameter of the I have it right here of the self pooling layer and the hyperparameter k. This is a, a really sensible hyperparameter because uh, it has to be chosen if, um, according to the um, to the quantity of nodes of the um, of the of, of the input um, so of the data set. So um, I would say that the first thing I, I would look is to to tune that that, that parameter. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that's one by uh, Francisco Valente. Um, nice talk. Did you consider to directly compute two different models, one for type zero and one for type one links? Um, yes, <laughs> sure. Um, yes, uh, well, but only when I. I found found that uh, the patterns were um, different. So when we we found the evidence that suggested that uh, there were two functions to learn, the first thing that we we comes to our mind was to to uh, okay then let's run uh, two different models for each kind of input. But that was actually the the last day of the delay, so <laughs> we okay. didn't have uh, the time to do it. But but we want to explore that uh, also. Okay. Okay, cool. So um, I also have a number of questions. Maybe um, let me just ask uh, one for now. Uh, how did you handle type two? Um, those that okay, are completely so, blind. So type two have no information at all. Um, so it's not worth to to make prediction on the, on that uh, no, uh, input type. Mm -hmm. We I, I only um, assign them a level of zero. Um, Mm -hmm. Automatically, in, I didn't even forward pass pass them to for for them from the model. Just okay. a level of zero when when I encounter them. What did you do in the prediction? Because they were actually in the set of um, vertex pairs that you would need to predict for the competition. How did you handle it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for the train set, I didn't consider it. In, in in my yes. in my, okay. uh, my election and for the uh, prediction, I first um, uh, identify them on the on the on the desk and and give them a a level of zero. So I, I, okay. I first analyze the data set, yes, and count them and okay, okay. Them I see, I see. So they were they were very uh, uh very bad predicted. So uh, yeah, okay, I understand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think uh, we run out of time. Maybe if you could just say one sentence about the TSNI plot. Um, what is the cluster that you see in the lower part of the? That was very curious. I, I think you didn't mention it. Uh, what, what are those clusters in the lower right part? Uh, how can you interpret them? Are those type one or type two? Uh, yes, are, are they type one and type zero uh, input? So. This is uh, the activations of the network or for each uh, input, or for each input type. So uh, there is a differentiation made by the network on the surpooling layer uh, for each uh, type and for the same label. Uh, these examples have uh, uh, all a label of one, 
-hmm. but there, there's still a different differentiation on the type. So, so that suggests um, there are two uh, different functions learned by the network. And there is our, our speculation. Okay. Okay, cool. Then uh, thanks a lot uh, for your contribution, for your talk. Uh, yeah, and uh, let's keep in touch. Thank, thank you, Mario. Thank you very much.